Just last week, I made a video estimating that the EPS for Tesla for this Q1 is going to be a dollar and thirteen. After questioning why Wall Street has an estimate EPS of just eighty-five cents, I got to work and I dug in. But what I found was pretty darn interesting, and you guys will find value here. Maybe a dollar thirteen is a bit too high, which is why in this video I'm going to revise my EPS estimate for Q1. So sit back, relax, grab that popcorn, smash that like button, and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's go. The first thing that I want to show you guys is the price cuts. I mean, when you zoom out and see how much Tesla has cut down their prices, it's not pocket change. It's quite a lot. Looking at these detailed charts, by the way, whoever made this chart, the base price history for Tesla for every single model and spec and energy and all these other just amazing, amazing notes and just whoever made this chart, shout out to you, my man. This is this opened my eyes and I wish I knew this before I made that Q1 video. This is very good data. But let's start off with the Model S. As you guys can see, the price was at 135,000. Now it's all the way down to 105,000. This is the Plaid. So that's shaving off $30,000 just from one model. I mean, that's that, that's that's crazy. But the Model S and X have extremely high margins and they have a lot of room to play with. However, this isn't the last time they're going to cut down prices. You're going to see prices go down. I mean, look at this. At one point, a Model S Plaid was 100000 So it has another 5000 to go down to just go back to what it was in 2020. And we'll look at 2020 earnings so we can compare it to now. It's interesting data. Then we got the Tesla long range going from 105000 down to 85000 I mean, again, it's not pocket change. Let's move on to Model X. I mean, this one got massive cuts just recently. And I mean, these recent cuts are not baked in these numbers yet. And you can already see the big drop, like from 140,000, just below that, all the way down to 105,000. Imagine buying a Model X at 140,000 and now it's like down like 35 grand to 105,000. I mean, I mean, I would be putting our mat, but that's the plaid. If we look at the long range, it went down from 120 to 95,000, below 100,000, but still it hasn't reached their all time low or their old prices back in late 2020 of 100,000 and 80,000. But I think it's going to get there if we continue with these prices, if not, I mean, if we're not already there already. But Model S and X, they have high margins they can play around with, but Model 3 and Model Y, their margins are a bit more tighter than X and S, and they sell more volume, so it impacts the company a whole lot more. Let's look at Model 3 first. The Model 3 performance, look at that, guys. It went from 62,500, now it's below or at 52,000, I mean, that's below the 2020s and 2021. I mean, 55,000, it's below 55,000. That's, ah, sheesh. Then we got a long range all wheel drive. I mean, th this one is increasing in price. It's good, but it's off the menu at the moment, as you guys can see. It looks like you can't really purchase it. I think there's a lot of orders for this and they can't reach demand. So that's why they said take it off, but we can expect them to reduce prices as well as soon as they're available. And this is what the chart is telling us too. Now let's see the standard range plus from 47 to 48,000 down to 42,000 and it could be going lower, but I don't think they're going to be reducing as much. Recently, they decreased the price of the Model 3 by a thousand bucks. So it looks like they are reaching to a point where they don't want to continue decreasing prices on these. Maybe because it's almost reaching that below low 20% margin we don't know yet because again at one point this thing was selling at $37,000 so I, they still have a lot of room to go but they're playing it safe and smart now let's move on to the model y which is like you know the one that's selling like hotcakes the performance model y performance was at 70,000 now it's below 60,000 57,000 is where it's trading at which is insane so not trading at it's like you know buying stocks selling at i mean technically it's the same thing right but anyways moving on to the long range all-wheel drive this thing was over 65,000 now it's below 55,000 that that is a 10k cut but we got to go back to late 2020 where the price was 50,000 
for the long range and 60,000 for the performance. Now performance is way below that. I mean, we've never seen prices this low for the Model Y performance. So that's not really good news, but you also have to take in the fact that, you know, they are benefiting from economy of scale. They're producing a whole lot more. So really it looks like costs and metals have gone cheaper for Tesla to reduce prices even lower. So that's good news. And the long range all wheel drive still hasn't reached that all time low of 50,000. I mean, all time low of 49,000, I guess right now it's trading at uh, just 52 i think right now it's at 52 and a half thousand and more price cuts to come you can bet on that for the rest of this year because we are in a very very weird year but at the same time their cost is getting less as well so that's really good that's good news so overall looking at this chart they have reduced prices significantly but they, most of them haven't reached their 2020 late 2020 level yet the prices there yet and what i found was pretty darn interesting let's go back to 2020 earnings report and compare to 2022 because 2022 was the highest and 2020 was the least in terms of vehicle prices and we can see what their margins were at it's pretty darn interesting if you guys are ready man smash that like button and make sure you're eating them popcorn because this is this is interesting so we got 2020 on the left and i got 2022 on the right let's first start off with 2022 on the right here this is where the prices were the most expensive all-time high for all the vehicles and you can see the margins 33 percent 28 percent 28 percent 25 percent 26 percent so in the mid 20s which is really good their operating margin was between was in the mid teens from 19 percent to 16 percent 14 percent 17 percent so these are really good healthy margins but then when we go back to 2020 we can still see the gross margins in the mid 20s which is really good we can expect this q1 earnings to show a gross margin in the mid 20s especially now when two of their biggest and newest factory has ramped up this will benefit from economy at scale big time but as you guys know me i don't take the gross profits i take i just go into the operating margin right away and as you can see in 2020 four percent five percent ten percent five point four percent and that's with like 2020 numbers now does this mean Tesla is going to be showing, you know, 4 to 10% or 4 to 9% operating margin this quarter? Well, in my opinion, I don't think so. And the reason why I say this is that back in 2020, they only delivered and produced just below 200,000 vehicles. This quarter, they produced 440,000 and delivered over 422,000 vehicles. And that's what two of these Two other biggest gigafactories newly built being ramped up. And as we know, as they continue to ramp up, they benefit from economy of scale. Every vehicle gets cheaper. And as we know from Tesla them saying themselves, their minerals and materials have gotten cheaper as well. So I don't think we're going to be seeing these operating margins at all, but I do think it's going to reduce. Now reduce to what, as you may ask? Well, let's jump into the spreadsheet. And let's see, smash that like button. So as you guys can see here, this is what I had in the beginning, 14%. Total net income over $3.6 billion and an EPS of $1.13. I'm gonna change it and reduce 14% to 12% and see what we get. Because remember, they have reduced prices significantly and just last quarter Q4, they're at 15%. And they only started doing price cuts in Q1 of 2023, aggressively. So 14% and 12% from 14% will give us almost $3.2 billion and an EPS of a dollar. Now, this could get lower, but I doubt it because again, if we look at the 2020 and 2022 quarter reports, what really struck me is the operating mark expenses. The operating expenses in 2020 was at 1.5 billion Q4, but in Q4 of 2022 was only one point, just 1.9. So this tells you they're becoming more efficient on how they make the vehicles, which is why I think 12% makes sense in my opinion. I think a dollar of EPS makes complete sense in this Q1. But if you do want to get bearish, 11.5 is the least, is the least I think it's going to get of 97 cents. So really my EPS estimate realistically is from 97 cents to a dollar for this quarter. Make sure you guys make a note of that for this upcoming Q1. 97 cents to a dollar. But what will the stock price be? Well, let's do 12% first with an EPS of a dollar and a 50 PE. 195 bucks per share. If the market likes this number and sees this as a bull move, because again, they cut so much price, but yet they're making a boatload of cash and money, they can probably reward the stock by giving a 55 PE of 214. But if they want to be bearish and they don't like it, we can probably see a PE of 45, maybe 40 as the least, which I don't, again, I want 56. I mean, we could probably see this number if things get worse. I don't know, I'm not too sure, but this is a bear market and anything could happen. 
In my opinion, I think keeping it at around 50 would make sense until the next few quarters come up. Then if we go back to a bull market, we can probably see the stock price going back up to the 220s, 240s, 250s around there. As you guys can see, my realistic price ranges for the end of 2023 is between 231 to 277. My personal price target for end of this year is 260 bucks per share. And if you go into a bull market, then this can easily go up to 300s. But again, 260 in the bear market end of this year, I think makes sense. But let's see what happens. It's only a prediction and a prediction alone. More DD and research is needed. And there you guys have it. The revised earnings and EPS. Again, note these numbers, 97 cents to a dollar. Wall Street is expecting 86 cents. I'm saying 97 cents to a dollar is realistic for this Q1. If you want to get bullish, a dollar and 13, but after looking at some data, I don't think we're going to reach that number. Or maybe, maybe we will. I don't know, but looking at data, I don't think we're going to reach that number. But you know, guys, we shouldn't get wrapped up in the short term too much. Tesla is a great long term stock to buy and hold. So, really, if you're a long term investor of Tesla, you're going to be looking upwards of 2030 at least. And with this video right here, Tesla Energy is going to take tesla stock to new heights it's a sheesh moment check it out you'll be disappointed support a channel by becoming a channel member or some getting some go all in merch because i am going all into tesla stock and subscribe for more and i shall see you guys in the next video see ya